Your adventures abroad can be a real minefield if you're uninformed. You could give someone the wrong gift in China, or offend your cab driver in Australia by sitting there quietly minding your own business. But sure is fun learning how people do things in different places. In Japan, there are generally no names for streets. The whole city is divided into blocks, each with a number. It might seem puzzling at first glance, but it's actually easier to find the block you're looking for. The same system exists in Korea. Hongi is a gesture for greeting for the Maori people native to New Zealand. It's done by pressing your nose and forehead against someone else's. It's a gesture of respect, so don't be scared if someone does it to you. Chicken is usually a main dish in most countries. But in Turkey, they put it in a popular dessert. It's a pudding made of milk, rice, cinnamon, sugar, and chicken. You should have cheese with your hot chocolate in Colombia. For most of us, chocolate is supposed to be sweet. But the ancient Aztecs and Mayans drank it with spices. Later, the Spanish added some sugar and brought it to Europe like that. In Brazil, women don't see body hair as something so inappropriate they have to get rid of it. It's a sign of beauty there. But they do bleach their peach fuzz with a special lotion. You might even see women applying their hair lightener right on the beach. In Wales, the most romantic thing that you can gift someone is a wooden spoon. This tradition dates back to the 17th century, when woodwork was well-spread. The gifter carves it so to show they'll always feed and provide for their loved ones. Instead of asking what your sign is, your date in Korea might ask, what's your blood type? People there believe that blood type is strongly tied with personality traits. A's are said to be responsible but stubborn. B's are creative but a little selfish. O's are natural leaders that can be arrogant, and the AB type is rational but highly critical. Be careful when choosing a gift for your Canadian friend. Giving flowers there is a sign of strong affection and may be misinterpreted as a confession of love. Instead of using their index finger, Malaysians point with their thumb. Pointing with the first finger is considered offensive. In some African countries, it's even reserved for objects, not people. People in Nicaragua point with their lips. They do it to indicate something happening nearby, not that they want to kiss the person or thing they're pointing at. In the Middle East, India, Sri Lanka, and some parts of Africa, it's rude to use your left hand when greeting, exchanging money, and eating. That's why you should be careful and try to use your right hand in most cases. In Spain, there's a day when it's absolutely okay to throw tomatoes at strangers. The Tomatina Festival takes place in Bunyol on the last Wednesday of August. Every year in one Finnish town, there's a wife-carrying championship. Competitors must carry their wives through an obstacle course and try to be the first one to cross the finish line. Inuits, the native people of Greenland, Canada, and Alaska, put their faces on each other's cheek or neck and rub their nose against it, taking a deep inhale. So if someone smells you in Greenland, don't worry, they just like you. In Scotland, there's a tradition called blackening. It's when relatives and friends gather and cover the groom and bride with mud and spoiled food. They believe that by doing so, they make the marriage stronger and happier. Okay. In Germany, the happy couple's closest ones break plates and dishes, and the soon-to-be newlyweds should clear up all the mess. Germans believe it'll teach the pair to work together and appreciate each other's efforts. Standing in line in Chile can be confusing for an outsider. There isn't just one general line, but three different ones. In the first, you place your order. You pay in the second, and the third is for taking what you came for. In Lopburi, Thailand, locals prepare a huge feast for monkeys. Every year, three tons of fruits and vegetables are piled up so the animals can enjoy the celebration. It's called, what else, the Monkey Buffet Festival. People in one village in the Philippines have the custom of moving an entire house to a new location. It's a reenactment of the way the villagers used to live. They see it as a sign of remembrance of what community is and how important it is to help each other. One study showed that 90% of Irish passengers say thank you to the bus driver. That should be a normal custom worldwide, don't you think?
Don't ever present clocks, handkerchiefs, or straw sandals in China. These items are associated with sorrow, and you won't be thanked for your gift. If you're in the Netherlands, don't give pointy objects as a gift. Knives, scissors, and the like are considered unlucky presents for someone. Another no-no is sprinkling salt on food when you're eating at someone's home in Egypt. The host might get it wrong and assume you found their food terrible. In Venezuela, it's rude to come on time. It's a sign of greed to come to your friend exactly when it was arranged. Show up a bit later, 10 or 15 minutes is enough. If you're ever invited to a Bolivian wedding or dinner party, never start talking about business deals or work. Doing so when you're supposed to be celebrating is a big no-no. If the host brings it up, then you're okay. And how can you know if your business meeting in Finland was a success? You'll be invited to the sauna. It's a place for chill and friendly talking, and only those who are trusted are welcomed there. In Norway, it's very important to adhere to table manners. Even finger foods like sandwiches and pizza must be eaten with the use of a knife and fork. Greeks don't have their own tooth fairy. They toss their baby teeth on the roof of their home. It's supposed to bring luck and good, healthy teeth. Hmm, roof of their home, roof of their mouth, I get it. In Denmark, kids write letters on Easter. It has to rhyme, and the writer's name should be ciphered in code. A child sends this anonymous letter to a friend, and if the latter guesses who wrote it, they get a chocolate egg. Wet Monday is a fun Polish Easter tradition, where everybody sprays water on each other. You can even get woken up by a bucket of water poured on you if you sleep too long. On Monday, guys soak gals, and Tuesday, the girls get their revenge. The Silly Socks Dance is a Canadian wedding tradition. Unmarried siblings of the bride and groom perform this dance, and others throw money to donate to the newlyweds' future life together. If you're ever in Spain on the New Year, get ready to eat one grape for each of the 12 clock bell strikes. They believe it leads to a year of good luck and prosperity, and it scares away bad spirits. Yeah, with just 12 grapes, there'll be no whining. No talking, no travel, and no leisure activities. That's a New Year celebration in Bali. Nyepi is the day when all citizens stay still and meditate to bring in the new year with a clear mind. In Russia, people have a sit-down right before a journey. The person who leaves home can also give coins to those who see them off. It's supposed to make a trip successful and ensure your safe return. If you're in Japan and some mysterious man in a uniform starts stuffing you and everyone else into the train, don't worry, it's totally normal. And this guy's just doing his job. He's the stuffer, and you're the stuffy. In Australia, sitting in the back seat of a cab is pretty snobbish. When sitting like that instead of the front passenger seat, you're distancing yourself from the driver like you're better than them. Uh-oh. And finally, if you see a single magpie in the UK, you must greet it to avoid bad luck. You can salute it, raise your hat, or wish it a good morning. Yes, another ritual that's for the birds. <laughs>